played you know mario brothers as a kid so uh all the little green tunnels and stuff that help you skip levels that's how i look at as mentors Uh, honestly i mean it's like they allow you to skip failures and it's like hey don't do this i did this i lost a ton of money or i did this and i lost a partner i did this i got a divorce don't do this do things differently and i think if we can come from uh you know a perspective again of humility and listen to them and be respectful of them, man, we can skip so many failures and so many heartaches in our life. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another Knowledge Bomb episode of Lead to Greatness, where we believe in helping others reach their greatest potential and together change the world. Today on Lead to Greatness, we have Justin Skinner. Justin is a farm raised entrepreneur, speaker, and a professional coach from the great Midwest. Justin is the author of his amazing book, Professional Failure, and a host of the Professional Failure podcast. On today's podcast, Justin shares story after story of different aspects of his life where he navigated through failure from the time he graduated high school with a potential of starting a professional baseball career and getting rejected. Please help me welcome Justin with Professional Failure. This is Cedric Francis and you're listening to Lead to Greatness. Yeah, so I grew up in the Midwest, um, grew up a farm kid. Both my grandparents actually owned dairy farms. Wow. So I was, uh, I w- had the pleasure of growing up on a dairy farm. So I had lots of uh, land to run around on and make mm. lots of mistakes and do dumb things on. So that was uh, a huge benefit, I feel like, in my upbringing. Mm. Um, so I got to work on a farm a lot. And then I also played sports. So I played basketball and baseball growing up and wound up playing uh, baseball in college and thought it might lead to, you know, a pro career, but it wind up, uh, didn't wind up happening, which is, which is fine. And I love the way where actually where my life is now. So um, it's uh, that's, that's kind of the backstory. And, and I still live in the country, still in the Midwest, uh, still loving, you know, kind of the, the country life. And you mentioned the situation with, uh, you know, going professional and that didn't happen. How did you feel at that moment? And then how did you navigate through that? Yeah, that's a good question, Cedric. Um, so for me, it was pretty crushing. I, I had had the dream of playing professional baseball since I was, you know, probably two years old. And my dad mm-hmm. introduced me to a baseball. So for me, I felt like I had sacrificed and made a lot of decis- decisions to put myself in a position to play professional baseball. Mm-hmm. And when it didn't happen, it was, you know, one of those moments where basically a scout and, you know, professional baseball saying, well, we don't think you're good enough. You can't do it. It hurts. Um, so yeah. for me in that moment, uh, I just simply cried. I cried for about five minutes. And uh, once, you know, I kind of came back and and realized that, you know, it wasn't that my life was over. Um, I had, uh, I feel like I had desperately pursued that um, course for my life. And for some reason, uh, I, I'm a person of faith that God just didn't open that door for me. Yeah. And, um, you know, looking back, I, I'm glad it's it's a it's a tough road. I had a friend, uh, one of my best friends growing up, he played professionally. And uh, he I mean, he told me it's just it takes a toll. So um, looking back, I'm grateful for it in the moment. It was hard. But honestly, I was newly married that helped me through it. And then, you know, I prayed through it. And I just I just knew and I felt like there was just something else for me, um, to be completely honest. So it wasn't like my life was over. So I just kind of had to keep moving forward, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. And I definitely, definitely agree with that. I'm also a man of faith and, and it, it, it gets you past some things that, uh, most people will, you know, people have taken their lives, unfortunately, yeah. over certain things that, you know, even myself, I made it through because of my, my faith and my groundness in God. So, I mean, that's, that's great. And I want to talk about your amazing book. Let's talk about professional failure. What inspired you to begin this journey and write this book and why? Well, first of all, thank you for the compliment. I appreciate it. Really the inspiration for the book, I think it was encouragement from others. Uh, Mm -hmm. Going back maybe a couple of years ago, I had a friend who was starting a magazine, a men's journal. Um, It's called the Kinsman Journal. And he sat me down and said, hey, I've, I've got this idea for a journal. And long story short, kind of helped him through it, but I wound up writing an article for him and it was all about the topic of infertility. My wife and I have been going through infertility or delayed fertility, however you want to refer to it for over 10 years um, now. So that it's been a really hard journey. And for me, I wrote that article 
And it was a way to kind of, you know, let out some feelings because I know as men, we can hold it in and it can erupt at the wrong time. And it just, you know, doesn't always uh, do us justice. Mm -hmm. So for me, I wrote the article and it was very healing for me. And from that moment, I just kind of kept writing and journaling. And then really the book kind of formed out of that. And I realized looking back, I was listening to a lot of podcasts and I was, you know, getting a lot of help from other people. And I just heard so many success stories, to be honest, which they're great. Uh, but then I kind of noticed that, you know, a lot of people had, you know, little stories of failure along the way, like, hey, I, I did this wrong and I learned from it and now yeah. I don't ever do it again. So I thought, well, what if I just focused on, you know, failure and being humble and humility? And that's kind of how it how it came about. I just kept writing and it it kind of evolved and and happened happened that way. Wow. During this during this moment and during this time, what has failure taught you? Yeah, the biggest thing is I think failure for me is very humbling. And I, I think it's a great thing for me to always keep in mind. And I think anyone, any man, any woman, I really think humility goes a long way. So for me, failing at anything, trying anything new, you're going to be terrible at it. And uh, the other thing about it is I feel like it just connects us. It's no one's perfect. No one in the world, I don't care who you are, is perfect. Everyone's failed in some way. Yeah. So for me, those stories of failure and failure moments really connect us. And I, that's honestly what I love most about failure is you, you start telling a story and someone's like, oh yeah, I've done that same thing. Or you can encourage someone through a story of failure. So I've enjoyed that a lot. Failure. I understand a failure a lot better now. And I believe, and I understand that it's necessary, but that was a time in my life when I had no idea. I thought I was the only one going through it. I thought nobody else had this experience and it made things feel really a lot worse, especially when you're dealing with social media, this comparison, everybody have a good life or whatever. And then you look at your situation like, oh man, this is, it's not like that. I, I, why do you feel that some people failure strengthens them and other people fall from it? And that's a great question. Uh, I, I think honestly, for me, what helped was first of all, obviously faith. Um, and then, uh, maybe three things, faith, my parents were really encouraging for me. And I know that helped a lot. I was pretty rambunctious and independent as a kid. And I got into a lot of trouble to be completely honest. And I did a lot of dumb things, but I know, um, in those moments, my parents never came back and said, you're just a bad kid. You keep making these dumb decisions. You know, you're a bad kid. They just, yeah. they said, Hey, look, you, you did an action and it was the wrong action. You need to correct it. Ultimately you're, we believe you're a good kid. And I think that had so much effect and impact on my life. And then beyond that, I think sports, I played sports and baseball mm -hmm. specifically, I think taught me, you know, how to work through failure because, uh, I didn't always deal with it correctly, but you know, as a, as a hitter, I hit, you know, three to 400 and I'm still over half the time getting out, striking out. I have to deal with the frustration. Um, but ultimately I do believe that that sports really taught me how to fail and ultimately just try in the, in spite of failure. And I heard this term said fail forward. I, I think yeah. that's what, from what you said, that's what I heard fail forward. And it's I really that. interesting. I, I, I want to ask you this. Why? are failures a gift? Yeah, that's a great question too, Cedric. Um, I think they're a gift too, because it does, it, and if I can come back to humility, I think it humanizes us and it keeps mm. us humble. Yeah. No matter who we are, and I think we see in the world today, we see it in positions of power. If you lose humility, you lose humanity. And I believe that you start treating people differently. Yeah. And so for me, I think the uh, ability to fail and continually fail throughout our lives is important. It's important to share it. Otherwise, I feel like we just disconnect from others and we almost have this God complex. And it's a different ball game when you're inside, when you're the one that's dealing with the situation. It, it's, it's slightly different. I mean, all the books, all the all the tools that we have, all the advice. I mean, but when you're really dealing with it. So I want to ask you this question just to get a, on a little personal into your situation. How did you learn to navigate failures? Uh, the short answer is I learned through failing over and over and over again. And I mm. think I had people around me in my life, my wife, especially that would say, Hey, I know you're trying, um, but you messed up. Let's try this, you know, differently. I don't know if it's, you know, willpower within myself to, mm. you know, like, Oh, I want to work on that. But I would say, honestly, having people around me that, that I was open to correction helped tremendously. And I know, again, I go back to sports and my parents and all that, but that's, that's probably one of the biggest things is just 
uh, having a mindset to allow people to speak into your life and having that, it doesn't have to be 500 people. It can be one close friend or five close friends, but I would say forming that network of people that can actually speak to you and not just, you know, build you up with fuzzies and non-truths, just actually for real speak to you and say, Hey, we know you're going through this, this moment of trouble. We know that you're angry or you, you lashed out in this way. Tell us what's going on. Like, you know, why, why did that happen? I think that's so important. Wow. Justin, that is a knowledge bomb. Here it is. That's a knowledge bomb. The smoke is clearing. And I just want us to get this, what you just said. You said three things earlier. You said faith, you said your parents, and you said sports. And it all boils down to really community, community, exactly. having that right thing. And I don't want the lead to greatness community to miss that is the aspect of having the right people around you, creating this community around you, community of support, because some of us, and I've seen this happen when that's been time in my life early on, before I've learned this, that was times in my life when I was associating myself with the wrong community. And here I am trying to do something different, trying to do something new, trying to do something outside of the spectrum of what I've been around. And every time I try to get out, the people in my current community is constantly pulling me back pulling me back, sucking me back into it, telling me I can't do it, telling me it's crazy, telling me you shouldn't do this, it's too risky. Instead of getting around risky people, I had somebody, uh, you know, journey of real estate, you know, um, somebody that, first of all, never rented a home, never owned a home, and they told me that um, investing in having rental property is very bad with bad tenants, but they had no experience. Let's talk about that. <laughs> What's your thought on that community and getting the right community? Yeah, no, that's a great point. I think no matter what you do, no matter what we do as people, there's always going to be someone that says that's too hard or, yeah. you know, I've read about that. I don't know about that. Yeah. But I do believe that that life rewards people of action. And I think that's where failures, um, you know, work into it, because if you're taking action, you're guaranteed to fail in some way. We step back and we learn from that. With that, that's why I love community and I love mentorship and I love mentors because mentors can, I don't know if you you played uh, video games growing up, but I played, you know, Mario Brothers as a kid. So uh, all the little green tunnels and stuff that help you skip levels. That's how oh, I look at as mentors. Uh, honestly, I mean, it's like they allow you to skip failures and it's like, hey, don't do this. I did this. I lost a ton of money or I did this and I lost a partner. I did this. I got a divorce. Don't do this. Do things differently. And I think if we can come from, uh, you know, a perspective, again, of humility and listen to them and be respectful of them, man, we can skip so many failures and so many heartaches in our life. Wow, Justin, that is another knowledge bomb. I'm telling you, that is so amazing. I never, I never, never associated this with Mario Brothers. That's one of my <laughs> favorite games. Uh, when I had my first Nintendo, me and my brother played it all the time. Thank you for that. That is really good. You mentioned something. You said something earlier. You said uh, trying, trying, trying that she was okay. Long as you tried, why is it important to focus on trying rather than result? Yeah. I think the biggest thing with trying is it kind of takes the pressure off of failure and it takes the pressure off the result. Because if you focus on trying and, and the thought is, Hey, I'm going to go into this, I'm most likely going to fail, but it's going to put me one step further to maybe a better result down the road. Um, I, I kind of had this, uh, this store with my little nephew too, a few, I don't know, it was a few months ago now, but, um, we went to his, his little flag football game and he's been wanting to play quarterback. He's 12 years old. So he's been, you know, playing catch with us as much as he can. Mm -hmm. Um, but basically went in and he, he got in, he finally got in a quarterback first play. He goes in and, you know, he throws this like amazing pass midfield and the receiver yeah. just drops it. So it's like, he goes from like, Oh, I made a perfect pass touchdown to nothing. And then. He winds, winds up going for and out. And then, you know, throughout the game, he just sticks with it and he winds up throwing a couple of touchdown passes, maybe a couple of interceptions, but they wind up winning. And after the game, he came up and um, his, his dad just said, Hey, Hey, Nolan, tell, tell Justin and Kendra what, what you told me. And Nolan looked up at us and, and just said, well, I was, I was really scared and nervous to go in the game because I didn't want to mess up. But then I, I remembered your book. So I just went for it. Amazing. And I think that moment, for him, that that's what I want to share too. like kids. It doesn't matter how old you are, or how young you are, just that moment of trying that now in the back of his mind says, okay, you know what? I can do this. 
and there, therefore I'm going to practice or I'm going to yeah. do this. I, I don't have to be scared. I don't have to like be scared of throwing an interception. It's just about the trying and the trying is what is where we grow. And if we never try, we're not going to grow. Justin, that is another knowledge bump. And I have to ask you this. How did that make you feel? I mean, even on a personal side, as a family member, your nephew from your book learned the lesson in the middle, in the middle of the game, learned the lesson. And it caused him to make the right decision, to hone in in the right feelings and, and to make that decision. How did that make you feel as an uncle? Oh man. Well, first of all, I can't take all the credit because I know his parents are amazing too. And they yeah. encourage him in that way. But for me as an uncle, when he told me that, luckily I had sunglasses on because it, I teared up. Like, oh, I man. mean, for me, I, I want to, I want to help him. I want to give the best of me to him and leave out all the bad parts. So for him to say, Hey, this helped me, this encouraged me, man, it was, it was emotional. Wow. 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 That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. And those priceless moments. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, he's a wise, wise little young man. And that's mm -hmm. what I love too. And maybe about, you know, even failures is that I've learned things from like four-year-old kids that they say some bomb and I'm like, wow, I haven't <laughs> thought about that before. And I think yeah. we just need to be in the place. It doesn't matter if you're four or a hundred, yeah. <laughs> be in the ability to listen and learn from them. Yeah, that's awesome. 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 How do you get through the uh, discouragement of failures? And the biggest thing, honestly, I would go back to faith at this point. Um, you know, my parents are still encouraging, but I'm 36. I'm, you know, I don't live at home anymore. And, you know, they're for the most part, you know, kind of on the sidelines. So when I'm in the game, really, it comes down. I have to pray a lot. I have to like give up, you know, my own selfish and stupid desires and whatever that may be. Um, timing wise, but I would say prayer is a big one. Um, just having a higher power to offload those, the, that stress to is yeah. huge for me. And then also my wife, my wife helps out a ton too. I can talk with her, um, through certain things that I wouldn't normally talk with other people. And sometimes I can just blow off steam and say, Hey, I just need you to listen for a second. I just got a vent and then I'm done. Yeah. So I know that <laughs> helps a lot too. I want to shift a little bit. So you wrote a book, but you're also a real estate investor into Airbnb. So let's yeah. talk about that because I know that's a journey all by itself, you know, and failure, failures and making mistakes and things like that. So uh, how does being a professional failure help you with stewarding money and investing? Yeah, no, that's, that's a great question, Cedric. I think that for me, again, it goes back to just failing and paying attention. Mm -hmm. So early on when we were doing Airbnbs, uh, one, one instance, we rented a loft that we had set up, you know, for business travelers, we rented it to a college student, they wound up throwing a party and trashing it. And we learned a lesson, we just we're not going to rent to college people that are looking to throw parties anymore. Mm -hmm. um, with that, I think it's just as we went along, we didn't do everything perfect or right in the beginning. But we, a big thing was we watched a lot of YouTube videos. We read a lot of articles and we tried to learn from people who had already been there. And I know that saved us a lot. Uh, for example, I like white sheets. We just, we do white sheets and, and all our, all our Airbnbs and someone early on said, just do white sheets. They're easier to clean. It's not worth the hassle of doing colored sheets. And we, that stuck with us. So little moments like that, um, and then honestly, when it comes to money, I've tried to make money too fast and I've lost money at times and I lost chunks of money trying to get rich quick. And I have learned my lesson. It took me a couple of times, but finally I got smacked into the side of the head enough where I said, fine, slow money is good money. That's yes. how I want to be. And, um, and since then we've just settled into real estate investing and, um, really focusing on passive, uh, slow growth. And we, we don't, we don't need to get there fast. Uh, and honestly, sometimes when you get there fast, it can be a, a negative. Wow. How did you, how did you end up getting into real estate? It was kind of funny. I actually, I got fired from a job. I was working mm -hmm. in a publishing company, got fired. And then that morning, uh, at, like that Monday morning, I'm sitting in my chair. I worked from home and I told Kendra, and then we went out and we started looking for a space. We just said, look, let's just build our own business. I don't really ever want to work for anyone again and have that ability to, you know, be let go. So we went out, we found the building in downtown Springfield. It was kind of decrepit and broken glass. And we contacted the owner and we said, Hey, if we fix this up, can we have cheap rent? And they agreed to it. And we got in the building and two, three years later, they said, Hey, uh, we want to sell the building. Do you, would you want to buy it? You have first right. So long story short, we ran the numbers and we had three full apartments and then our space and we bought it. 
And then that's when we first kind of experimented with Airbnb. And from there, we just kind of fell in love with Airbnb or with real estate, Airbnb. And then also there's so many tax advantages with, uh, with real estate as well. And we, the more we learned, the more that we just tried to invest. Honestly, we tried to invest at least 50% of everything we made every year back into real estate until we got, got going. Wow. 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 Here it is. So you're talking about real estate investment and you're talking about, you know, different, different things in business. There's things that you probably getting ready to think that you are trying that you haven't done yet. And you can, you kind of entering a space of the unknown and the thought of failing, failure, failure haven't happened yet, but just the thought of failing, how do you navigate through that? Yeah, that's a good question. I think for me, I just want to fail in a small way. So with even the environment of the economy right now, we don't know, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I think there's a lot of people that don't know. And honestly, I don't know there's anyone that really knows what's going to happen. But with that, I think for us, we have tried to sure up debt and get more fixed debt. So, and, and get rid of all our variable debt over the next five years. So for us, that kind of gave us some peace of mind. And if we fail, and if we have something that goes wrong, we just have to, you know, lop off an arm and we don't lose the whole thing. That's kind of the the process because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't, uh, I, I don't claim to, and I just know that I'm still going to screw up in the future. I just want to screw up in small ways yeah. that doesn't put the whole real estate portfolio at risk. So you said something, I want to say this again, you said, you know, uh, decreasing, you know, all, you know, the debt or whatever, you know, you really, really uh, putting some debt down. And I really think that's some great advice, Justin. I, I think that's really great for us and how you navigated through your failures. And of course yeah. I'm navigating through my failures. I want you to speak to that individual yeah. uh, right now, right now that may be in the midst of failure right now. It, it's happening. It, it's not even finished yet. The, 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 the ball is dropping. It haven't quite hit the ground yet, but it's dropping. What type of advice or uh, how can you help that individual? I want you to speak into his or her life right now. Yeah, no, that's good. If I could uh, speak any word of encouragement, my biggest thing would be, um, and it may be cliche to say, but you know, diamonds are made in in the hardest and the harshest environments. And if you can stay steady and stay true, just know that right now you're in the pit and it sucks. Um, but if you can just keep moving forward, there is a lot of harvest ahead of you. Um, so just keep digging, keep trying, and keep planting seeds, and just look forward to a better day. Ah, Justin, that's another knowledge bump. Justin, I, and and I really love that. And this this is the crazy thing about it. It does sound like a cliche. I'm a witness. I'm a witness that this really, it really works. It yeah. really works. I mean, just to be persistent, don't give it, not giving up, not quitting, just going, 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 even when it don't look like it, just chiseling, chiseling exactly. down the tunnel. You will, you will eventually get through it, man. This is so great. And this is stories. I re, I've read uh, quite a bit of autobiographies, and the story remains the same. Everyone's story is the same. I never heard of one six. I haven't heard it yet. Maybe Justin, maybe you can help me in the lead to greatness community. I've never heard one person, one successful person, uh, uh, without any uh, um, adversity, without any failures, without any obstacles that got in their way. But when the obstacle got in their way, they turned those. Uh, those what's supposed to be a stumbling block into stepping stones. And listen, 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 listen. This is not a cliche. Keep going, keep going. The pressure of the diamond, Justin. Thank you. That is so, 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 so amazing and so, so real and so tangible. Thank you. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Good word, Cedric. What tips, tools, advice could you give an entrepreneur looking to expand their business? Yeah, I would say two things. First of all, don't get in a hurry and then also find a mentor. Uh, I've seen a few times I've read about it, but people get in a hurry and they want to build, you know, they want to make $10 million in the second year and they take a lot of risks and they, they hire and they expand. And then at the end of the year, they're negative, you know, $500,000. Yeah. If you can grow slowly, that's what you want. It's just, it's just like a tree. Like you, the trees grow slow. They don't grow overnight. Um, if they grow too fast, they're going to topple over. So you have to spread your roots in business. So grow slow, grow steady. It's going to seem like nothing's happening for four or five years, but if you stay consistent, you will have the foundation to build a massive tree off of. 
that would be probably the biggest tip I could say is just, just don't get in a hurry. Uh, Justin, thank you. That is another knowledge bomb. I love the tree analogy. And with the, I, I'm telling you, every time you, I, I start seeing things, this thing started coming to life. And I thought about it because you talked about the tree that grows slowly. I also thought about the mushroom that grows overnight, but it grows overnight and it burns quick. You know, yeah. it grows quick and it dies quick. So man, this, this that's, man, Justin. Thank I like that. that. I'm going to, I'm going to keep that analogy. Be a tree. Don't be a mushroom. I've never thought of that or, or heard that either. So that's, that's really good. I like hey. that. Man, you're a great storyteller. Man, you're amazing, oh, amazing storyteller because you're you're talking and you're bringing things to life. And I'm I'm pulling out of the life that you have painted, you know, with the picture that uh, you know in the words that you're using. So thank you, thank you. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, and I and do. I I want to deflect the praise. First of all, thank you. Secondly, I've learned from some some really good people, and I'm still learning. So yeah. it's not it's not like I sit in a room and I I do this by myself. I've had some amazing mentors, and and that goes back to find a mentor that would be maybe the, the, the best thing you could do, find someone to, to help guide you. And I've had plenty of them and I still am seeking them in the future. So I, I love your show and Cedric, I, I love your energy. So I thank really you. appreciate you having me here. It's, it's been really fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. I'm so excited. Don't miss this. Don't let the, let the greatness. Do not miss this. Find a mentor. You don't have to do it on your own. You can learn from others. There are people, there are really people out there that have made mistakes and they don't want you to make the same mistakes that they have made. There are really people out there that has your best interest at heart. You just, first of all, if you don't believe that, you need to surround yourself in the right environment and get in the right community, you know, so you can know that that's true. It's one of those things that's kind of funny, Justin, where I hear, um, I, I've hear, heard women say this in the past when they say all men are dogs. And I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, what? I mean, it's like, that's some of the, it, it, it's, it, it's so inaccurate as yeah. inaccuracy can be. I mean, no, not all men are dogs. Maybe we're looking in the wrong locations. And, 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 and that's the thing, you know, so get that mentor, get that mentor in your life. They're going to serve you well. They're going to serve your life. This is something that worked for me. I mean, have you done this? Like I have, I have mentors in different areas. I have mentors mm -hmm. in, in, in my faith. I have mentors in finance. I have mentors in leadership. I have uh, um, I have mentors in different areas. What, 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 is, what is your story? Yeah, that's exactly how I do it too. Because again, I go back to no one's perfect. It's just like my, I love my dad and he's amazing, but there are some areas he's lacking. And yeah. if I want to be good in those areas, I just need to find someone who's good at it. So I'm all for that. Have as many mentors as you can, um, because it does spread out if one, and, and honestly, if one drops off, and you know you you don't have a relationship with anymore. You know you can bring someone else in, but if, you, if all your eggs are one basket and your one mentor either passes away or you guys part ways, you got to start from scratch. So I'm all for spreading the love and getting as many mentors in as many different areas as you can. Mm, now let's bomb to go, Justin. Thank you, thank you again. Thank you so much. If someone wants to connect with you and what you're doing, where should they go? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram. I'm at Justin C. Skinner. I'm on Twitter and then uh, LinkedIn as well. So, and then you can also find me at uh, at my website, www.professional-failure.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. On behalf of the Lead to Greatness community, I want to thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy schedule and adding value to us all. Well, Cedric, thanks for having me here. Like I said, I love your energy, love your show, love what you're doing. Keep pressing on and uh, until next time. Thank you. Same to you, Justin, definitely. And don't forget to subscribe to Lead to Greatness if this is your first time. And this podcast was helpful to you. Leave a big thumbs up. And also, I want you to check out our Marriage Coach Podcast, the podcast with my wife and I. If you're on iTunes, please rate this podcast and leave a review and help get the word out. Again, thank you, Lead to Greatness Nation, for joining us on today. Looking forward to seeing you again on next week. Till then, remember, if you help others reach their greatest potential, together we can change the world. Peace. We out.